Hi guys, I'm Matt Hetherington with MHTableTennis.com and today we are halfway through my 30 days of coaching tutorial videos. Um, I made a terrible decision today for your benefit. Uh, obviously yesterday I put out a video that focused on doing a lot of leg workouts, um, which takes me a little while to recover from. Today, I cleverly decided I was going to do a video that focused solely on forehand footwork. Um, in saying that, I've done my best to provide some reasonable demonstrations, but at the same time, uh, my legs were certainly not in the best shape they could be for this kind of exercise. But let's get into it. I have gone through and selected some useful drills that you can start off with and some progressions of things that you can use for practicing forehand footwork. And these are all drills that are topspin oriented, so it's forehand footwork against topspin. Um, and we're going to start off with something really simple, but first I'm going to explain just a couple of brief tips. When you're doing forehand footwork, it's really important particularly more so than a lot of other areas that you line the ball up relative to your body in the right place and so a lot of the time that's outside of your knee a little bit outside and a little bit in front there's kind of a sweet spot area where your body weight transfer uh, reaches its maximum acceleration this is the spot you want to be lining up the ball your job during forehand footwork is to make sure that your body is in a position that lines the ball up in that place. So a lot of the time your focus is lining the ball up, lining the ball up if the ball's coming here and you're playing forehand, getting this knee into position and getting the stroke ready. So again, a lot of focus on preparation, making sure that your core is engaged and ready to go, your racket's back and that basically by the time you get into position, you're ready to hit the ball. That is the main focus of forehand footwork. When you're doing it against topspin, you wanna to make sure you're not dropping your racket too low or having your angle too open. So keeping your racket up and closing the angle to go a little more over the top of the ball is very helpful. Also, another thing that I think is very important, particularly when you're coming to these more step around shots, is ensuring that you have enough space you don't get squished or are leaning away from the ball so very much focusing on being in a position where you can stay balanced and centered so when you get to these step around forehands it's making sure that you have enough space here so that you're not leaning or uh, your weight transfer is not disrupted so starting off with something really simple and very common for practice two forehands on the forehand side two forehands on the backhand side Once you want to progress from this drill, all you need to do is increase the repetition of the footwork. So we go from 2-2, two, 2-1-1. Two, two, one, one. So one forehand on the forehand side, one forehand on the backhand side. You can move these two points around, but generally the idea is two fixed points on the table that you're moving forehand between. <laughs> very important with these drills that we're not trying to play with too much power okay your goal is not to win here um, if you're playing with so much power that you're only able to hit three or four balls before you're pushed out of position or before you miss then you are kind of missing the point of the exercise if you are in position a lot of players can play with a lot of forehand power 
The problem is a lot of players in matches don't get into position. So the point of these drills is to train coordination between your brain and what you're seeing and your footwork so that you can really get muscle memory and reactiveness that happens straight away. As soon as you see a ball coming here, you can see a forehand opportunity and get your feet there. So very much the, uh, the goal is to play with a reasonable power level that allows you to repeat the footwork as many times as possible. Another good fixed position drill is the four point forehand. Um, so a lot of players commonly do the three point, which I'll get onto next, but starting off you could do the four point forehand, which basically is uh, a forehand, a middle forehand and a forehand here. And then on your way back, you do a forehand in the middle. So you're always transitioning middle forehand, forehand, middle forehand, forehand. A lot of you should probably be doing the three point forehand, which I'll get to next. Here's a demonstration of the four, or some people call it the five point forehand. said leg workout yesterday very sore I've done my best to do a demonstration of the three-point forehand which no point lying about it I'm terrible at three-point forehand it's one forehand one forehand one forehand then coming all the way back across to the next forehand ball here and um, something that players who rely on their forehand a lot um, a very good drill uh, for table coverage and for combining short and long footwork movements. A big problem for a lot of players is the middle ball or the elbow ball and so another drill that i like to do which is a little bit more randomized is two-thirds forehand um, so for this demonstration i flipped up my training partner a little bit so i'm playing with adam hugh which is lily Yip's son and used to be a u.s national team member so this is two-thirds forehand where basically you can play anywhere into two-thirds and it helps me uh, just not get used to being stuck on this forehand side and being prepared when a ball comes to this middle area to play forehand. Well, there you go. There are some useful forehand footwork drills for you to try out if you haven't been trying some of them already. Um, there are lots of different combinations you can do. Obviously, once you start adding backspin into the mix as well, that increases the number of uh, different drills that you can do. I would say, even if you're not a player that's stepping around a lot, um, or if you're somewhat more backhand oriented sometimes, it's good to get some forehand footwork drills into your practice when I started doing it more and I didn't really think about this too much, all I knew is that I hated doing forehand footwork um, or footwork in general, but doing forehand footwork improves your footwork overall. It improves your speed, your stamina, the ease with which you move around the table. So even if you're not a player who plays a lot of forehand and matches, um, these drills are really, really useful. And I would advise you not to neglect them and particularly a drill like three point forehand you might think it's the most horrible drill in the world you might hate doing it um, add it to your training don't back away from drills that you hate doing because they're difficult because they're painful um, or because you really struggle with them if you really want to improve you need to push your boundaries a little bit. Um, obviously, 
some of the older players out there or less physically able um, don't push yourself past the point of being reasonable you know I don't expect 70 year old players to try doing 3.4 hand um, but it is important to just gradually push those boundaries and keep on trying to improve so thank you for those of you who have subscribed to the channel thank you for those of you who've been following these videos um, I appreciate the feedback and I'm glad you guys are asking some questions in the comments or emailing me um, and hopefully I've been able to help some of you uh, if you know other players that might find these useful please share the links with them and uh, yeah thank you guys for sticking with it I'm gonna be here again tomorrow for another video and basically for the next 15 days at least to get through these 30 days of coaching tutorials so stick tight and I'll be back again tomorrow